Okay, so what's what's what what's your passion or what's your angle on, on water issues? Uh, the biggest sort of problem I see with water issues is that people are so unaware of the shortage of it that we face. I spend three to four months a year in the desert every year, and people down there are very aware of the value of water. Whereas here in the Great Lakes region, we're surrounded by water. We, we take drinking water and wash our sidewalks with it. We waste water on just an insane scale because we don't realize its value because it's all around us. Maybe in the future we'll be facing a different situation and people will suddenly realize how valuable a resource that we waste all of the time. We don't manage it properly. We, you know, we don't understand that we should be looking at everything as a watershed issue, not just uh, this is where the county line ends and we don't care and we're going to make these rules. It's a big you know, interwoven biosphere that we need to be more aware of and cherish and steward a lot more. You want to share some of your ideas about this uh, closed-looped sort of septic system stuff, or what do you? Uh, if there's, how would one find out more about that? Or there's a company out of Australia called Biolytics that makes a, a a water treatment system, which is won awards internationally. And when I talked to them about doing it in North America, they said that the American septic system basically is wrapped up by the engineering companies that do all the consulting and build the plants. And they don't care. They're not, they said North Americans can drown in their own shit for all, we, all they care. So they're happy to fix what they've, you know, what they've got is working great. And they have to deal with the fact that they're in severe drought. They value water. They can't afford to waste water the way that we do. So they've developed a system that's just light years ahead of what we're doing. And the system we have here is so ingrained that they, they won't even, you know, when they did the local thing here in Picton a few years back, the people that were the experts that they were consulting that were supposed to know all about it had never heard of it. And they were they used the excuse that, well, it's not approved in North America. It's like, well, just because we haven't woken up to the fact and decided to get on the leading edge of something doesn't mean we should hang out at the back of the pack and be happy to pollute and be wasteful. But, you know, the, the engineers that, that run that, those companies, and that have that mindset don't want to advance because they've got a vested interest in the system as it is. Any strategies for shifting that? Because obviously the te- it's not a technical issue, it's, it's, a, it's a political or a values issue. How do we, how do we switch it's that? A, it's, a, it's a whole cultural issue because, you know, those, those engineers were educated in our system, they've grown up through our system, they've been tr- taught to think a certain way by our system and they, they close their eyes to the other things, other ways of doing it. They only see, yeah. oh, this is the way I was taught in school. So, and instead of saying, you know, just because this is the way we do it, it doesn't mean it's right. Yeah. It just means that's the way we do it. It's like the old story of grandma used to cut the ends off the ham, you know, and mom always cut the ends off the ham. And, you know, and somebody said, well, why do we cut the ends off the ham? It's like, well, mom always did it, you know. Yeah. And she says, grandma always did it. And when you ask grandma, well, she cut the ends off the ham because in order to fit in the roasting pan, that was why she did it. You forgot the, yeah, the context. You forgot the real reason. The con- yeah. there, there's a context for it. And, you know, just because that's the way we do it doesn't mean there isn't a better way to do it. It doesn't mean that we shouldn't stop looking for a better way to do it. You know, it, there's been so many problems now that they're, you know, they're finding out about all of the pharmaceuticals and chemicals and the fire retardant stuff that's that's in our water system. It's getting, you know, it's, it's just more and more and more of it is going to get there. And until we stop putting it out, you know, if, if we're making millions of tons of it every year, you're just going to increase the amount that's in the water. It's not going to go down. You know, it's not going to decrease. My experience so far is most people don't really know who's in charge, what's in the water, or even what these things are called. How can we organize for change if people don't even know how, know how to what, what to call it? Ah, that's like we, a need t- a little, like, we need a little. We need a like, whole lot of education. We need education. like a front page newspaper every day of like. Oh, by the way, this is. This yeah, is, and the, we, we you know we need to stop allowing people that are paid by industry to obfuscate and say that oh well we're not sure. I mean, how long did the tobacco industry go on telling us that there was no no absolute proof that you know we all knew. You know, it's like it was a big shock suddenly. Oh, yeah, cigarettes cause cancer. Well, no joke, jerks. We've known, we've known that since I was a kid in the 60s. But everybody, you know, wanted to believe. You know, like, yeah, 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 it's the, it's the, you know, the Easter bunny. It's the fucking tooth fairy. It's, wake up, folks. You know, there's a reason. I mean, 
Yeah. You can hire a scientist to say whatever you want. And industry has lots of money to hire scientists to, to, to color the picture. But if you really stop and think about it, pure water is a resource beyond value. And if we don't open up our eyes and look around and start seeing the problems that we're creating, we're leaving future generations a nightmare. Wonderful. Thanks so much.